Hey guys, what's up? Doing a little steel talk Sunday. And we're going to get into tool steels. <clears throat> not their history. Not even their origins. Uh, just kind of what classes they are. There's six different types of tool steels. They're grouped into water hardening, cold work, shock resisting, high speed, hot work, and special purpose. So let's get into water hardening. That would be the W class of steels. <clears throat> and, you know, water hardening steels have been around for a very long time. Um, really popular with, um, you know, guys who forge, even guys who do cutouts or stock removal knives. And typically you're going to heat, you know, the steel up and then you're going to quench it in water. This isn't favorable, um, really with knives because they are so thin and you can get warping and cracking with that. It's just an inevitable thing. Um, the group of folks who have kind of perfected this are the Japanese knife makers. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, guys like Murray Carter and people who have been around that craft and are very comfortable with, with quenching in water. But the main thing is, is that anytime you have a steel that starts with a W, it is a water hardening steel. So W1, W2, W7, you know, all those steels, water. The next is a cold working steel, but it's an oil hardening steel and that's O, the O class or O subclass, I guess it would be, <coughs> excuse me. And these steels typically are, you know, hardened in oil, hot oil. We're not, you know, going out heating up the steel and quenching it in cold oil um, it's going to create bubbles and pockets to and that will you know crack the steel or warp it in ways obviously huge temperature differences so when you're hardening an O1 you want to take it up to its uh, final temperature let it soak, and then you're going to quench it into a hot oil. Um, I've seen anywhere typically from 127 degrees to almost 400 degrees. Some of those cooking oils like canola and peanut oil have a, a smoking uh, or a smoke temperature of around 400 or a little bit over. So you can get away with that. <clears throat> and honestly, you know, be not, well... Because O1 is just, it's, it's different in, in that it, it has a lot of um, carbon, but not a lot of carbide formers. Um, it can get really hard. And it's also, if you bring it down lower in HRC, it can be a tough steel. It's not going to be super wear resistant in the sense of having carbides to help with that wear. It's going to get its wear resistance from being hard. It can get up to 65 HRC. Given a specific <clears throat> or special treatment, it can probably get up to 66 ranges and still, um, you know, be, be pretty stable. Um, <clears throat> this is a very popular steel again with knife makers. Uh, the next one is also a cold work steel, and it is the, I guess, the A subclass. So your A2, your A5, I think, and other ones. Um, and this is the air, air hardening tool steels. Um, these typically, hang on one second, just looking at my notes. These typically um, have a little bit more, you know, carbide formers like vanadium. And these will be brought up to their 
their austenizing temperature held and then they will be um plate quenched with um nitrogen gas or just a regular air compressor or they'll be brought up to temperature in a vacuum and then that vacuum can exert a nitrogen gas and and kind of quench them at a specific temperature um <clears throat> These are also very popular with with tool, or with not with tool, obviously tool makers, but with um, knife makers because it's it's similar that it can um, it can get fairly hard, but also it has those extra carbide formers in there like vanadium. Um, I think I brought this up on a graph and I'll bring this graph up too to show you guys um, kind of what I'm looking at but um, <clears throat> I mean looking at the composition of A2 another reason why we have a this to be air har air hardening <clears throat> is because it has chromium in it and <clears throat> what chromium does to steel is that it does it does make it corrosion resistant in that it uh, forms an oxide chromium oxide around you know the steel to give it that layer but also it it is a carbide former and forms fairly hard carbides um <clears throat> i think close to five percent or a little more of uh, chromium in a2 so it's no it's not corrosion resistant um but it does have chromium in it to help and it's not a stainless in that sense and <clears throat> yeah it's a it's a very good steel the next next group we have is um again cold work but now we're getting into high carbon high high chromium steels and this is your d2 or your d class steel so d2 got a custom here from uh a maker named Adam Webb, uh, he offered up his custom so I can uh, test it out against a uh, production knife, um, AW Blade Works. If you guys are interested, um, check him out. Very talented dude. Um, but he made this one. It's it's a one-off proto that he has. It's in D2. Um, he has it ran in, in between a certain range, HRC. Um, and I think it's because it's intended to be like a sort of like a neck knife sort of bushcrafter thing. But then also it's going to <clears throat> maintain, um, it's going to maintain a, um, shit. It's, it has a lot of chromium in it. So it's going to help with, uh, re corrosion resistance when you're out in the field and stuff like that. Um. Contrary to popular belief, people, I feel like, shy away from D2 and are worried about D2 because they're like, eh, it patinas. It, it's not as bad as you think. It has enough chromium here to where it is close to a semi-stainless steel. Um, if we can bring that up really quick. And um, it's... It's like people are very, very, it's got 12% or not 12%. Yeah. Almost 12% uh, chromium, <clears throat> more carbon than the, um, than the A2. Obviously we're getting in the high carbon, high chromium. And it also has more vanadium than A2. Um, for some reason though, just there's certain companies that can't just nail the heat treat on this. I don't know what it is. Um, this is going to be another air hardening. Like I said, an air hardening because it has so much chromium in it. Um, and yeah, so we're going to get probably a little bit better performance depending on, again, what the HRC is. Um, if you had this ran at a 57 or 56 and you had A2 ran, you know, in the upper 60s, this this isn't really going to like what are you you have nothing to hold those carbides to help you know power through all of that material and 
I mean, the A2 is going to outperform it if it's harder. <clears throat> you got to balance everything out with uh, your carbides and all that. But D2 is going to be your cold work, high chromium, high carbon steel. <clears throat> and then next, uh, we get into, you know, different steels. Um, we have our shock resisting steels, and those are going to be your S steels, um, your S or your S class, I guess. And you know, let's go S S two. Sure, S two is a one of those. And it's again, it's not going to have any chromium, or it's not going to have any chromium in it. We're going to have carbon. We're going to have um, the new elements introduced, like a lot of you know moly and mag manganese to kind of help with hardenability or how deep that hardness penetrates into the steel and they're typically those steels are just made for high shock um and they they do have very very good hardenability and they can resist shock at low to high temperatures um not i haven't seen this steel used in knife making but i'm i'm sure it could be I'm sure it would make a very, very good chopper or something like that. Something that's taking a lot of blows to uh, different materials. So um, next you have your your hot working steels. And th these are all going to be H. So it's going to be like H1 through, uh, I guess, H59. So, um, but these are all broke. These are broken up into three different, again, subcategories because you have your hot working <clears throat> but then you have H1 through H19 are going to be chromium based hot working steels. Um, and if we look at the uh, the composition of these, let me clear all of this out. We are going to see that there is another element that's being added and <clears throat> Oops. Oh, it's not the element I thought it was going to be. All right, so we have H1. Um, and I mean, because this is high chromium, 16 like 16 percent so it's way more than d2 and this steel has definitely been used in knife making with the salt series by spider co um and we can also get into the so h1 through h19 is chromium based so it's going to be high chromium but it's going to be high you know hot work steel uh, next is going to be your H20 through H39, which are tungsten based. So now we're getting into a different carbide former tungsten. So we can now create a uh, W2C carbide or a WC carbide. Um, these are comparable to uh, niobium and vanadium in hardness. Um, they're within a similar range. And again, there's arguments online to which one is harder. Like, let's split hairs here. Like, they're within the same range. They all are pretty fucking hard. Um, and that's, you know, that category. <clears throat> and then we have another class, which is H40 through H59, which is uh, molybdenum. Molybdenum? 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 Um, Molly based steels and again Molly is going to help with that hardenability that penetration of the hardness into the steel how far it goes and it also helps with you know grain structure video I guess but moving on <clears throat> after H we have our um, Molly based high speed steels so we're getting the high speed class um, these are going to be steels that will perform at um, well, let's face it, they run run very, very fast. They're very fast steels. I'm kidding. 
they perform at a very high speed, so we have a lot of wear resistance. These are going to be high wear resistance steels, and these are your M4s. Um, steels of that nature. And we're very familiar with these steels um, in that they can get very, very hard um, up to 67 HRC or higher um, in some cases where you have a really, really good um, heat treat. Um, but typically, and this isn't spec sheet stuff, this is from a book that I've been reading. It is called the fuck is it called it's called heat treaters guide practices and procedures for tool steels um i don't know i found it online somewhere it's fucking it basically it goes through every single tool steel ever um and then some and it breaks down what the best austenizing temperature is for whatever your part whatever size your part is and again People think that heat treat is like, oh, just set it to this temperature and it's fucking going to be this HRC. No, it comes down to <clears throat> how, how thick your part is, how, probably not how long your part is, mostly how thick it is. So the hardenability has a factor in it. And it comes down to what composition is in that steel. Now, not every single, you know, piece of M4 is going to be exactly the same. They're all going to be different, um different runs of steel so your heat treat is going to be different per run of steel so every time you get a new run of steel you have to heat treat it and then once you get to the point you want to get it whatever hardness you want to get it at however your whatever your microstructure is and all that shit then you're going to keep that for that run of steel and then once that run of steel runs out you're going to do that test again on something else not many makers do that and not many heat treat facilities do that and not many companies do that so knife companies do that so that's where you get into difference and variances and all that shit and usually when you buy cer certain steels you buy a, a large quantity of it and i mean when i bought k390 um from alpha knife supply they they had a large stock of of that steel and you can actually enter a code and look and see what that steel composition actually has in it because they test each one that comes in. Um, but anyway, I digress. <clears throat> so now we're getting into our Molly type steels and that's gonna, again going to help with hardenability. But then we also have, these are also high in tungsten and they're also high in vanadium. So now we're going to get steels that have very, very high hardenability and steels that can get very, very hard and also have very, very good wear resistance. So that's like a perfect storm, right? Um, as far as toughness, again, I think people really get toughness and, um, ed and um, wear resistance kind of, not confused, but kind of lost in translation. Toughness is, you know, how hard can I bash this into something? And then wear resistance is, how long can I cut this thing for? Um, M4 is pretty tough um, as far as, you know, smashing things. We can take it down again to 60, and um, it's going to be very, very tough steel. Um, not as tough as, like, a steel like Z-Tough or steels of that same composition, but it's you know, a little lower in that realm. It's a lot of choppers people use them for because they can get away with, you know, that wear resistance and then that, that high toughness. Um, but again, it's a high speed steel, Molly based M, M for Molly. Just remember that. <clears throat> the next steel is one that I don't have, but I do want to get my hands on because it's a very, very interesting steel to me. And I've seen a lot of videos on it. It is the uh, tungsten based steels. So our T15 is a very, very popular one. And that one, um, is go again, it's going to get fairly hard. Um, I've seen 68 Rockwell on that stuff. Um, and it is 
the crucible name for it is CPM Rex T15. Um, I guess that's it, obviously it's the powder metallurgy version, but um, here we are, and we have almost 12 you know 12 percent wolfram or tungsten uh w wolfram is the uh, old term for tungsten um you know uh element so that's almost 12 percent um not a ton of carbon and you know four four ish a little over four percent vanadium so semi-wear resistant but again like i said those tungsten carbides get very very hard so it is similar to um vanadium and if we take a look at um let's go cpm uh 15v and we can see that um Oh, also there's cobalt and T15, so that's going to give you a very, very um, high hardness in um, very, very high heat scenarios. So if your part is running in or drilling or cutting very, very quickly and we're heating up, boom, that thing can still hold a hot hardness. Um, but if we look at, you know, that compared to 15V, we got... Um, you know, T15's at 4.9% vanadium and then uh, 15V's at 14. So a 10% increase in, uh, not 10%, sorry. 14.5 to 14.9% vanadium. Very low uh, tungsten. And... <clears throat> but it has a shitload of carbon as well, so it has a lot of carbon for those carbides to form to. Anytime you get a, you know, high carbon steel, like we learned from the 1095 video, we can get very, very hard. Um, but also we have a lot of carbon for these tungsten and vanadium carbides to kind of attach to and form their carbides. Um... And that's where we get our wear resistance from. And T15 is a very good wear resistance steel. Um, probably not as good as, uh, you know, 15V, but it can get very, very hard. Um, I believe both of those steels can get upwares to 67 to 68 Rockwell. Um, Anyway, yeah, tungsten-based uh, steels. I'd like to see more tungsten-based steels, honestly. Um, they're very, very interesting steels. Um, only because we have that we have that tungsten carbide that forms, and if you know, along with the vanadium carbide, whew, we can get you know a knife that'll you know cut forever. <laughs> So, the next uh, steel class is the P-series, or the plastic mold series. Uh, these are probably going to be a chromium-based steel um, to kind of, you know, safeguard against, you know, certain corrosive elements and certain plastics and stuff like that. Um, I guess a good plastic mold seal would be comparable to, like, a, you know, M390 or something like that, um, even though that's a newer steel. <laughs> There's not very many, you know, P steels that I've I've heard of that um um are you know used for making knives, but it's uh basically they're designed to meet the needs of zinc die casting and special requirements of plastic injection molding. So I assume they have some sort of chromium in them to safeguard them against that. The next specialty steel we have is the uh, L series steel, so it's gonna be low alloy. So we're not gonna have a ton of alloys in these steels. Um, these are primarily used for uh, it's just a special purpose sort of tool steel. And then the next one we have is the F series, which is a water hardening, uh, more wear resistant than a W type tool steel. So. Um, 
these are both carbon and tungsten based uh, special purpose steels. Um, let's take a look and see if we have anything in that. Um, like an F7, I think. Uh, nope, F2. Yep, okay. But we can get a very, very high working hardness in these steels. Um, get up to 68 Rockwell um, because our carbon is pretty high, you know, almost 1.5% carbon but we have very very high wool from as well um again these are specialty steels so um i'm not sure what the use is for in knives but i'm sure they're they're balanced enough to you know be used for like drills and stuff like that so but yeah um so that's kind of a look into tool steels again we have our our watering or our w steels water hardening w steels we have our cold worked or oil hardening O steels and then we have our air hardening cold work A steels high carbon high chromium cold work also air hardening D D series steels so D2 stuff like that again we are shock resisting steels hot working steels our H series H through 59 uh, chromium tungsten and molly based and then next we have our high speed class, which is a Molly based steel, so our M4s, tungsten based, our T15s, and then our specialty uh, plastic mold and special purpose steels, P, L, and F respectively. So that's kind of a breakdown of what these, not in depth obviously, but what these steels have to offer. Um, and then we can get into our other tool steels like, uh, you know, V3 and, you know, V4, stuff like that. Um, they're going to have, a again, a, di a chromium additions and other things to kind of help with, you know, toughness and wear resistance and things of that nature. So, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed all of this. Let me know if there's anything you, any type of steel you want me to talk about, any types of you know parts of steel you want me to talk about again i'm not super smart when it comes to all of this stuff i'm still learning but um i'm just passing on the knowledge that i know kind of in layman's terms of what this all means so all right let me know what you guys think and uh thanks for watching